talking a little bit about cranial nerves. So, a patient presents with right-sided uvular deviation. So their uvula is deviated to the right side. What is the, where is the cranial nerve lesion if you have uvular deviation to the right side? Where's the cranial nerve deviation or uh, uh, lesion? Well, first, the cranial nerve is going to be 10, and 10 supports the uh, palate. And so, it is the left 10. And how I think of this is that the palate keeps the uvula in the midline, and such that if you have a left, go look at your left hand, if you have a left cranial nerve 10 palsy, what can happen is, is that the palate gets weak there, and so if it gets weak, it falls, and then the uvula deviates to the right side. So again, one more time, you have the palate that's going to be supported, cranial nerve number 10 on the left side fell, and thus, on the opposite side, you're going to get the uvular uh, deviation. So where is the nuclei of 10 located? That's going to be in the medulla. Okay, A lesion of the cranial nerve 12 on the right would produce what clinical exam? Deviation of the tongue to which side? The right, exactly. So right-sided tongue deviation and right-sided cranial nerve number 12. Where is the nuclei of 12? That's going to be in the medulla as well. Okay, All right, very good. Patient with difficulty chewing has a deviation of his jaw to the right. Where is the lesion occurring? Difficulty chewing. Nom 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 nom. What you guys were just doing, right? And deviation of the jaw to the right. So when you're talking about right-sided deviation, we're talking about cranial nerve number five, the right-sided deviation of the jaw, cranial nerve number five. And what, what side is it going to be? It's going to be the right side, OK? So remember, it's ipsilateral uh, type of uh, uh, lesions, OK? Where is the nuclei of five located? The nuclei of five is located at the pons. Exactly. Very good. So speaking of chewing, let's go through the anatomy of mastications. So what are the mastication muscles that close the jaw? Mm, mm. That's going to be masseter, medial pterygoid, and temporalis. Yum. Mm. Masseter, medial pterygoid, and temporalis. What about the mastication muscle that opens the jaw? That's going to be the lateral pterygoid. So the lateral pterygoid is the muscle that's important in opening the jaw. A 14-year-old boy comes to the ER one, after, after, one hour after colliding with the teammate playing soccer. Go big or go home. Physical exam shows that edematous tissues of the left eye with mild depression of the left zygomatic bone. Exam shows the skin between the eye and the upper limb, lip. Eye and the upper lip is going to be numb. What cranial nerve is likely damaged? Eye and upper lip. What cranial nerve was damaged? That is going to be the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. Exactly. So remember that maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve is going to be a sensory type of uh, uh, nerve, and it is going to be in that distribution near the upper lip. If patient was unable to look up secondary to this injury, what would you suspect? So he had an eye injury, the zygomatic bone uh, got kind of uh, broken and depressed, and now I can't look up. I can't look up. What are you worried about? Well, you're worried about inferior rectus muscle of the eye getting entrapped in that zygomatic bone. That's really important for you to know. And that is secondary to orbital floor fracture. And that's a good one because on CT, they can show you the picture of the bone fractured and the muscle right next to it. Bell's palsy is probably your highest yield cranial nerve lesion, so let's go through this vignette. Avid hiker who presents with inability to raise her eyebrows. She has dry eyes and is hypersensitive to sound. What cranial nerve may be affected? What is it, guys? That is going to be seven, exactly. Cranial nerve seven is related to Bell's palsy. So what is the mechanism behind the hyperacusis? Hyperacusis means soft, I say something soft, and ah, man. I hear it really loud. And the reason why is because you have stapedious weakness. And so you get more oscillations and conduction at your, uh, uh, in your inner ear structures. And so it's really important for you to realize that cranial nerve, ner nerve 7 is going to innervate the stapedius. What is the most common bacterial etiology causing Bell's palsy? That is going to be Bor Borrelia burgdorferi, the, uh, etiolo the, uh, the bug that causes Lyme disease. What may happen to this patient's sense of taste? It's really important for you to know that cranial nerve number seven is going to innervate, okay, 
the anterior two-thirds of the tongue in terms of taste. So that's important. When you're talking about the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, guys, when you, when you say taste, i.e. was the lunch good or bad, that is going to be cranial nerve number seven, corda tympani. What about when you say, ooh, that coffee is hot or that Red Bull is cold? That is going to be sensation, and sensation is going to be V3. So that's important with, with the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. Sensation is V3, and your taste is going to be corda tympani, which is a branch of seven. So how does an upper, no neuron, neur uh, upper motor neuron, how does an upper motor neuron lesion differ when we're talking about the difference between Bell's palsy? Remember that when you damage the nuclei in the pons, i.e. if you have an upper motor neuron lesion, if you have an upper motor neuron lesion, you will have forehead sparing, i.e. you want to have complete paralysis of the forehead, but you're able to wrinkle the forehead with the upper motor neuron lesion, and that's because of this bilateral distribution of cranial nerve number seven. So let's talk a little bit about the tongue. The anterior two-thirds of the tongue taste, what did we say, guys? It is corda tympani, cranial nerve number seven. What about sensation? Hot, cold, hot, cold, that's going to be V3, okay, mandibular division. The posterior one-thirds of the tongue, that's going to be really easy. Posterior one-third of the tongue, that's going to be cranial nerve, that's going to be cranial nerve nine, exactly. And that's going to be sensation and taste, okay? Sensation and taste. And it's important for you to know that what is going to be the motor innervation of the tongue? That is going to be 12, okay? Majority of the time, it's going to be 12. What muscle is going to be an exception? A lot of your tongue muscles, a lot of your tongue muscles are innervated by 12. But there's one tongue muscle that isn't innervated by 12, and that is going to be palatoglossus. Palatoglossus, yes, it has glossus in it, which makes you think of tongue, but palatoglossus is actually going to be cranial nerve number 10. So that's an exception that they can give. 